also. But we have something common, we have something to share for generations, which, which we have been doing for generations, for a long time. You know our culture, cultural traditions are the, you know, basement, they belong to the basement, they create the basement for our growth. No nation, no individual, no family can afford to function successfully without proper base. So yesterday is very important as today and as tomorrow. These three colors are there. The time which creates man. You cannot afford to just neglect any of these three which, which you know, now we are in the meeting point of the past and the future. And we create in the, we, we, we remain in the present, we get inspired from the past and we have to re recreate our future. So these are very, very interlinked, interrelated, from which no individual has any escape. You cannot deny, we have not come from heaven. We are continuously living here for generations. You have your generation, you, are, you represent your generation and you take inspiration from your past. So past cannot be simply neglected or thrown away. Countries which have tried to throw away the past, they have realized that it is not fair, it is not the right way of real development. China has learned it. China has refused at a time, you know, you remember the black days of China. Yeah when the Mao, during the Mao regime, his wife and friends, they wanted to throw away their past, their, their, you know, opera, Beijing opera. Beijing opera people were, were, were sent away from their country. I mean, they had to escape from the country. <coughs> they wanted to create Beijing opera according to their whims and fancies and political demand. And some people remained, those who were psychophants could not otherwise exist. So they, they heard what they said and created new making opera, Chinese opera, everything. But some of them had escaped. I know, I met such a, an artist in Paris, I, I mean, who is in Paris, but I met him in, in, in America. He told me he has left the country for good, for his good. <coughs> And he was conducting his classes in Paris. When the whole black days were over, when the black period was over, he was invited back to China. But he refused. By that time, he developed his, you know, work there. So now China has realized its past. During my last visit to China, I was taken with, with, with a friend of mine, Prasanna. Uh, we were taken to a pagoda, where on the fifth floor there is a big bell. And the person who accompanied, uh, uh, who came with us as our guide, belonged to the communist party. And this gentleman asked me, do you want to, to chime this bell? I said, what for? No, if you have any wish, it will be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy with the things that are going on. I, I said, we don't, I don't, I don't have, I mean, you, do you believe it, I ask? Yes, why not? You believe in communism also? Yes. Why not? This is this part of our culture, our belief. What is that? Belief may be right, we don't know. It is all personal. No, what I say is that uh, China originally never wanted to you know, keep away from the path of the, the, the you know, the, the, the main path, the main the route. So that is why, you know, it is there inside, in the blood. Indians also have. Then why do you repudiate? Why do you question your own tradition? You can, 
work on your tradition and improve it, improve your life on the basis of correcting. But, you know, the experience of long, long years of our, our predecessors will certainly be of use to us. We may not accept everything. Yeah. But the link should be maintained. Because it is only, in the, you know, uh, the knowledge which is gained by experience. Empirical knowledge. Empirical knowledge is knowledge which is gained through ages, through experience. Are you happy with the things that are going on in India, like social political things? Yeah. They are going through a very, I think, very difficult, times. A difficult time, a difficult time, acute crisis. 